This is another video in my series on alternating current. In this video, I'm going to look at average power. You can find this topic along with others in my course entitled Basic Fundamentals of AC Circuit Analysis. You can access this and my other courses on my stand store at this web address. So let's take a current and a voltage and apply it to a circuit and let's just presume the circuit is made up of some reactive material and it's made up of some resistive material. So indeed the current could be represented by the red uh, sinusoidal curve there and the voltage could be represented by the green sinusoidal curve there and you can see that the voltage is following the current by a lag of a certain amount and the power as we've seen in our previous slides is given by at least the instantaneous value is given by the instantaneous voltage times the instantaneous current and at times it can be positive and at times it can be negative. The voltage sinusoidal wave can be described in mathematical terms or trigonometric terms or algebraic terms, whatever you want to call it. The voltage can be the maximum voltage where Vm is the maximum voltage times sine omega t, where t is some time in along the time curve on the bottom in seconds and the term omega is actually related to the system frequency. Uh, we call it angular velocity, but I don't want to get hung up on terminologies, just that it's related to the frequency of the system. And it's actually a term that is in degrees per second. So if we multiply it by t seconds, we're left with a, an angle. So omega t changes as we move along the T line uh, generating an angle that goes sinusoidal from positive maximum to negative maximum and crosses zero. So we can describe the voltage in terms of the maximum point of that voltage times sine omega T. The current can also be described the same way as a maximum current times sine omega T. However, it is ahead of the voltage by a certain phase shift or phase angle and we'll call that phi for now. So it's a phi is a set angle. So we have to include that in our formula so that we can now place the current curve somewhere along the T line with respect to the voltage. If we multiply the left hand terms together P, that would give us the instantaneous power for the circuit and that right hand side would become a voltage maximum times a current maximum times sine omega t times sine omega t minus phi. Now we're getting a little bit complicated in formulas and I'm not that interested in the getting to the final results as I am with the final results. What I want to do is end up with a formula that will calculate how much power, real power, is consumed by my circuit. And the amount of real power that is consumed by the circuit is shown in purple in this uh, diagram here. Everything above the positive line for power is power consumed. All the yellow stuff below the zero line is what we call reactive power. It's where the reactive components are absorbing the power into their either fields of some sort, whether it's a magnetic field or it's a electrostatic field in the case of a capacitor. Regardless, it pulls the, 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 the power in, but then it releases it back to the circuit. So we have a net effect of zero power when we're dealing with reactive. We are mostly in 
interested in positive power consumption. This power consumption is, we call it the average power consumption of an AC circuit. And it would be the power that would be supplying, say, a resistive load like baseboard heaters. It could be a hot water tank, or it could be a motor that is has no reactive, uh, or it's just, we just want to calculate the amount of power that the motor is delivering mechanically in, in the form of mechanical power or some of the heat losses. Regardless, we are interested in, in the real power consumption. So what we're interested in is, what is the average of that purple section that's there? We need a formula that would say, okay, this is the power, the average power that we're consuming for that particular load. Now, the way we get that P average is to take that term that we've just developed there, the instantaneous power, and we want to manipulate it so that we kind of level off the peaks and fill in the valleys. And somebody's done that hard work for us. I'm not going to go through it. The average power through a trigonometric and integration workings mathematically, you can get that P average, which is real power consumption, with this formula. In other words, the PI formula boils down to P average equals the voltage maximum times the current maximum all over 2 times cosine of the angle between the current and the voltage. As I said, the development or proof for average power starts with the formula for instantaneous power. This exercise I'm leaving for another video, so stay tuned to see the average power derivation. Before concluding this video, I want to make you aware of another huge sale that is coming available today. EcoFlow will be offering benefits worth up to $3,000 on some of their products. You can get $500 off the Delta Pro 3 and get $300 off an extra battery for it. You can also obtain $300 off EcoFlow Smart Home Panel 2. Furthermore, you can extend the savings when you purchase uh, the Delta Pro 3, you can get a free 400 watt portable solar panel. These are just a few of the items that are on sale. To look at the full extent of the sale, simply go to this web address. As a reminder, all the letters in this web address are lowercase. And not to be confused, this letter is a lowercase l. This video is part of my electrical technical information series. In this series, I'll be covering essential topics to help you understand electrical systems. Be sure and stay tuned as I will also from time to time be reviewing electrical products that in my opinion are worthy of paying attention to. This address will give you access to the supplier of aforementioned products and it is also the connection to obtain a free copy of my 50 page electrical power crib sheets which will serve as a quick reference of technical calculations that you may need. Also by providing me with your name and email address I'll be able to forward you information to connect you with electrical products and to provide you with notifications of more electrical training videos.